Happy Monday, August 26, 2024. We've got a bunch of severe weather on the table and several other things to talk about. So we're here. Okay, let's dive right into it. Starting off with the day one severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. Enhanced three out of five risk today for Minneapolis, Rochester, Bloomington. About five million people under the gun there for severe weather in South Dakota, Minnesota, over towards Wisconsin. Big time significant wind and hail day. The tornado threat also looks quite robust for this time of year. It's nothing crazy, but we're definitely keeping an eye on it. If you live out here, you need to be hyper weather aware today. Also, y'all over there near Boston, okay, in New England, Rhode Island, Eastern Connecticut, even in the eastern tip of Long Island, y'all need to watch out today for severe weather, okay? Wind is going to be the main thing, but we're watching all aspects here as we have a pretty dynamic system moving through that is bringing severe weather to tens of millions of people across the country today. And that's going to continue tomorrow. 20 million people in a slight risk of severe weather from Chicago to Toledo to Cleveland. Okay, big threat here is going to be wind and hail once again, but the tornado threat cannot be ruled out. Okay, we've got places in central Wisconsin all the way over into central Michigan that are definitely going to be seeing at least the slight probability of a spin-up tornado or two, maybe even a stronger one if things come together just right. So we don't want to rule out the tornado threat here, even though the main thing that we're looking at is obviously wind. And the same exact thing can be said on the day three outlook. Y'all, this is probably one of the bigger day three outlooks that we've had in terms of coverage because there's 41 million people under the gun for severe weather on the day three here on Wednesday from Michigan all the way over to New York City. And of course, Connecticut, you guys are included in this once again. And then there's another secondary risk area back there in South Dakota and North Dakota. So lots of people expecting severe weather over the next couple of days. And now let's break that down on the future radar. So here's what the radar could look like as we go through the next several hours. You can see here things are pretty quiet today around 2 p.m. Eastern, but watch how quickly things light up over there in eastern Wyoming and then especially in eastern portions of South Dakota and southwestern portions of Minnesota around 5 p.m. Eastern. This is when we expect to see the explosion of supercell thunderstorms over here in Minnesota back into South Dakota. Also some heavy rain and some stronger storms popping off off of the mountains here moving into western portions of South Dakota. Dakota as well. And then we've also got these storms over here in the Northeast that we've got to be concerned about. Hail, damaging winds are going to be the main threat at this time, but it's right at the beginning stages of these storms, especially the ones in Minnesota there, where we are most concerned with the probability of seeing a tornado in, in the supercellular form. When these things first start popping off, there's going to be enough spin in the atmosphere to where I don't think that we can rule out a tornado or two. Okay. So right in here is where I am concerned about that. And then of course, we're going to watch the these storms grow upscale as the evening goes on as we head towards 10 p.m. Eastern. This is going to be a big time hail and wind threat as it moves into western portions of Wisconsin. And of course, the storms that we saw pop up in Wyoming, that's going to move through the same areas in South Dakota where these initial storms are popping up earlier in the day. And by the way, by 10 p.m., the storms in the northeast are going to be pretty much over. As we get into the early morning hours on Tuesday, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., we're going to have a leftover mesoscale convective system bringing strong winds to the Minneapolis area. But things die out quite significantly until we get into the heating of the day as we go into the day on Tuesday. Later in the afternoon on Tuesday, that's when we see the resurgence or the re-sparking of these storms over here where we're going to see some strong winds, maybe some hail in uh, Chicago, and we're going to see even more storms pop up all across Michigan, maybe even down into portions of Illinois south of Chicago as well as we go later in the day on Tuesday. And then that's all going to happen again on Wednesday a little bit farther to the east. So this is the full progression of what we have on our simulated radar here. This is not exactly what it's going to look like, but it's a pretty good guess. And that's as far out as we can see right now. Okay. And we are on standby mode here at the weather house. So we're watching this very closely. There's a chance that we do a live stream today. In fact, it's an elevated chance, 60% chance that we go live today, 40% tomorrow, 25% on a day three. That's something that we've got to watch very closely as the population numbers are so high. So we're on standby here. So we're basically, we're watching the radar. If anything starts looking really significant, significantly concerning. We're going to turn on the live stream for you right now. It's not set in stone. We don't have a scheduled start time or anything like that. Just know that we're here and we're ready to go live if we're needed. Looking even farther into the future, this little kink right here is our culprit, right? This is what's causing our storms and this is what's going to allow the storms to continue over the next couple of days through Wednesday. At least we're going to be dealing with this disturbance and it's also going to kind of bring way to another trough that's going to come in here and cause more storms and also bring temperatures 
closed down for a lot of people in the central U.S. and the heartland that have been, you know, needing some cooler temperatures. And, and we'll talk about the impacts of that here in a minute. But for the most part, this is just going to be another system that comes in as we go into late this week into the weekend that brings another chance of storms and rain. But mostly it's going to funnel in some much cooler air into the central U.S. That's going to lead to some interesting things as we go into the future. As we go beyond 100 hours from now, things get a little bit more wonky as far as like consistency goes. The euro right now is suggesting that we're going to see yet another big ridge here, another blocking pattern form, and that's going to allow for things to get really warm. It's summer, we expect that, but I'm trying my best to give you guys some hope for relief, and right now it's this trough. That's the best we've got. 8 to 14 day temperature outlook below normal in the Midwest, most of us, above average up there in the Pacific Northwest, and once again, this is thanks to the series of troughs that we're experiencing and the rain and the storms that we will experience associated with that in the center of the country. And then I believe that this is kind of picking up on that signal for the next ridge. We're going to see a lot of heat building in the west if that big ridge pops up over there. This is where all of the rain's going to fall over the next seven days. No huge areas of interest, I guess, other than southeast Texas. Definitely on the lookout for some flooding down there as a lot of the moisture that's eventually going to feed our storms up here in the north is, you know, having to come through the entrance area of the Gulf of Mexico down here. The monsoonal energy is still with us as well over here in New Mexico and Arizona, pretty much everywhere except for in the Mississippi River Valley. <laughs> and of course, over here in the West Coast is in the crosshairs of potentially heavy rain over the next seven days, but no major flash flooding threats jumping out to me right now. Taking a look at the tropics, the GFS upper level wind data shows several waves coming off of Africa, but none of them turning into anything significant. We talked about this last video, quite unusual whenever we have so much energy in the Atlantic and the GFS loves painting incredibly unrealistic storms in the long range. It's not doing that right now. All the way out here on September 10th, we're high and dry in the Atlantic. And the National Hurricane Center's outlook here is also high and dry. Seven day graphical tropical weather outlook. There's nothing. Next seven days, rest assured that we're going to have pretty much nothing to worry about. There might be an area of interest that pops up, but no developing storms right now. Of course, like we talked about in the last video, the Atlantic Ocean is still a powder keg. It would be very surprising if the outlook, if that didn't change, because I mean, everything's there for a hyperactive a hurricane and tropical season. In fact, between August 28th and September 3rd here, there is an elevated chance of tropical activity. And that's not due to any specific storm. It's just the parameters are there, right? So we've got that in place. And even all the way through September 10th, that is still going to be in place. But as we just saw from the GFS, there's a chance that the ripe environment for rotating storms in the Atlantic just might not be taken advantage of. And that's great news. Hopefully that continues. But I do want to let you guys know that, man, if something gets going out there, it is going to light up quickly. If you want to support the channel, shopryanhall.com is a website that you can go to and you can use the code TEMPEST10 for 10% off a Tempest weather station. Thousands of you guys have these now and you love them and, and I love them and they're awesome if you want a personal home weather station. They're 339 bucks. Not cheap, not cheap, but like they're good. So like, of course they're not cheap. 10% off of that is actually a significant discount. So please take advantage of that. I don't know if you can get that at other places. It's something that we offer ever so often and we're offering it right now over at shopryanhall.com. Of course, buying anything from this website supports us here and it provides jobs to people in rural Kentucky, which is important. And it allows us to do what we do here without having to worry too much about the corporate sponsor side of things. And we love that. So thank you for all the support. And once again, shopryanhall.com, Tempest 10, take advantage of it. And that's all the weather I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. We're on standby mode. Hopefully we don't see you later today in a live stream or tomorrow or anything like that. But uh, if we need to, we will. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.